ob Stürm oder Steit, ob die Sonne uns lacht. Well, hello, Glue Troopers. Max and Max's Models here. And today we're going to talk about a kit model that doesn't even exist yet. The Army's new M10 Booker. Now, they're calling this thing a mobile protected firepower system, and I understand that, but in reality, it is a light tank, and I'm just going to call it a light tank. Prove me wrong. Just to sort of justify that, let me give a real quick look back. In the interwar period and uh, even the beginning of the Second World War, we did have light tanks. They primarily did reconnaissance and stuff like that. They weren't designed to duke it out with the heavies. And they also gave the infantry units a, a little bit of uh, armored fire support. Well, that's basically the job of the M10 Booker. It's supposed to give light infantry units some direct fire capability while protecting the crew. And that's one of the many roles that the light tank used to fill. Now, of course, this vehicle is not designed to duke it out with the heavies. It's to give airborne infantry and light infantry some armor assets. So the organization is completely different than an armor unit. You can go check out the Chieftain's video on this. He talks about it. He also talks about the vehicle that lost the, the competition. That's the BAE Systems light tank, and I'm just going to keep calling it a light tank. The General Dynamics Land Systems, GDLS, made the Booker, which won. And his videos do get into why they chose one over the other. I'm also calling this a light tank because it really does seem to perform the job that traditionally was the light tanks, giving the infantry some local fire support. Now this vehicle came into existence because the 82nd Airborne Division commander realized that, hey, we actually, as an airborne unit, do need some kind of direct fire armored asset. Something where our crew can get close to bunkers, machine gun nests, things like that, and knock them out. You don't need an Abrams to do a job like that. Of course, again, I reiterate, this is not intended to duke it out with the heavies. That's what any tank-guided missiles are for. But the Army has had light tanks since before World War II. Uh, they had the little uh, Marmon Harrington tank that they played with for a while, which you probably have seen on TV shows like uh, the Beverly Hillbillies that occasionally would make appearance when Jethro decided he was a general and wanted a tank. The Army was so happy with light tanks that they kept developing them. They came up with the M24 Chaffee, which they later gave to other countries like the Japanese, and they loved them. And I believe there's some M24 Chaffee still in operation in South America, I want to say Uruguay. And, of course, later on they developed the M41 Walker Bulldog, which was a light tank that couldn't take a hit, but it had a good gun on it. But, of course, these vehicles were not designed to duke it out with heavy Russian armor. However, being lighter, they could go places the heavies couldn't. The idea of airborne units having a dedicated armor asset is not new. The M22 Locust was developed because it was uh, something that they could bring in in gliders. Although, I don't think they fared very well. They just weren't enough firepower. Well, the Booker seems to have answered that. Now, I don't know if the M10 designation is an honor of the old Wolverine M10 tank destroyer with a 3-inch gun, which the British called the Achilles when they put their 17-pounder on it, or if it's just the way the sequence of numbers for military equipment went. But part of me thinks, given their eye for history, they may have named it somewhat in honor of the old uh, tank destroyer slash self-propelled gun, and don't get me going down that rabbit hole. The vehicle's actually named after two people named Booker. Uh, one private who was killed in Tunisia in '42 and a staff sergeant who was killed in Iraq in 2003. Traditionally, tanks were always named after generals, Abrams, Sherman, Stewart, and so forth. But as there is no actual naming convention for a mobile protected firepower system, and the current sensitivity about how military bases and equipment are named, I think they actually made a pretty good selection. These guys both died bravely while serving the Army, so I think the name's a good one. Anyway, I don't know how long it's going to be before anybody gets a kit of this out. And the question is on, will it be AFV, Club, Dragon, or Tamiya that gets the first one out? I'm assuming it'll be in 135 scale. And I think it's a really cool looking vehicle. It kind of has that futuristic tank look to it. And my understanding is it's actually quite capable as long as you use it the way it's supposed to be used. And don't think you're going to go out there and duke it out with heavy Russian armor. After all, this ain't no Abrams. But having served in the infantry, I can tell you, it would have really been nice to have a vehicle like this with us from time to time. 
I can see this thing being real handy. And of course, weight was a big deal because since it was designed for the 82nd Airborne Division, I believe this vehicle will be air droppable. And that's going to be fun on the suspension system. Of course, they may do it via lapse drop, but still, I think it's a system that fills a pretty big hole in the Airborne Infantry's inventory. So who do you think will be the first ones out with the kit of the new M10 Booker? Leave your comments below. I'm Max of Max's Models, and as always, model on. Doch, doch, doch.